Okay, so that's... If you can, if you can hear me now, give me a green thumbs up, so I know. I think there is beyond yeah, green thumbs up from Liam, thank you very much. Okay, so I was speaking into the nothingness there for a few minutes, so let's start again, take two. Okay, so welcome everyone, today's live lesson. Um, today we're going to be doing the Scratch Project, a, a cut on next game, and there are a few new people joining us today for our live lesson, so let me just start off with a little introduction to how would these work. So, we're going to do a scratch lesson, and there are we have the instructions here, there are 11 steps. And the way it works is, I'm going to demonstrate each step, and then give you some time to do it. So, uh, you are seeing me in this video box here, I'm broadcasting out here. And when I demonstrate a step, the best thing for you to do is to go into full screen by clicking on the full screen button here. And you get a nice clear picture of my screen. And then uh, I'll demonstrate a step, and then I'll give you a chance to do it. So come out of full screen, you go ahead and do it, do the step, and then we'll move on to the next one. So I'll demonstrate step number one, and then give you some time, and we'll move on to step number two. I'll demonstrate, give you some time, or work your way down through it like that. Some people just prefer to work away, because all the instructions are here. Uh, so if you want to work away, we can see Gabby Coder and Liam, and so on, working away there. You can go ahead and, uh, and do it yourself, but if you want to come along with me, come along with me. If you have any questions, you can type into the chat by clicking on the blue button or typing a question there. Or you can use the react button. So if I'm going too fast or something, you can just type in, uh, please slow down, they're going too fast. Or you can click on the red thumbs down here and I'll see that in the chat, in the chat feed here and I'll know that uh, I'm going too fast. Okay. So without further ado, let's get going. So as I said, we're going to be creating a scratch project. It's a game called Cut and Mouse. So step number one, so if you want to go to full screen now, if you're following along with me, step number one is we're going to open up the scratch website, create a new project, and then delete the cut sprite. So I'm going to click on the link in step number one. It opens up the scratch website, so I've got two tabs my instructions, and then I'll turn my Scratch website. I'm going to click on Create to create a new project. You have a second to load. If I'm not logged in, which I'm not, it will show this tutorials box, which we can close here. And we do not need this cut sprite here, so you can click on the little uh, trash icon to get rid of the cut sprite. Once you have that done, come back to the instructions and just click on Done. To get your reward on your points, um, and then I'll, I'll keep an eye out for people completing step number one, and then we'll move on to step number two. So, if you want to go ahead and do step number one, uh, please do go ahead. So, I can see a couple other people joined this. So, Square Sam joined in. Is there anyone else? I haven't called those. I called their Murray. Killer Gamer has joined this as well. So lots of people are today. Everyone getting 94 St. Patrick's Day? I really hope the weather gets better because it is lushing rain here where I am. Okay, so I can see six coders have completed step number one, so I'll give a little bit more time for people to do it. Okay, so I'm going to move on to step number two. Again, if I go too fast anywhere through this, please do let me know. Just type it in the chat or give me a red thumbs down in the chat and I'll know that I'm going a little bit too fast. Okay, step number two is we're going to add in the uh, mouse sprite. So we can see the mouse sprite here that we're going to add in. In the instructions, anywhere you see this blue box here, it's, just, it's a tip to show you how to do something. So this is showing you how to add a sprite. 
from the library, so anything that we are in Scratch, uh, all the objects, the characters and the objects and the cars and the animals, they're called sprites. So we're going to open up the sprite library and add in this capital. You can see how to do it here in the little tip box, or if you want to go to full screen now, I'm going to show you how to do it. So I'm going to click on my Scratch tab here. Again, I've got two tabs open, one for instructions and one for Scratch. And I'm going to be covering my head. I'm going to go down to the bottom right here. And I'm going to put my mouse over this little cat in the blue circle and then click on the magnifying glass. And what that's going to do is open up the sprite library. So there's lots and lots of different things in here, um, sprites that we can use. So we're looking for the mouse. This is alphabetical, so I can scroll down to N. And I should see the mouse. There are some mouse one. Or you can actually type into a search. You can type like that, mouse, or you can actually even click on animals. And it'll just show you all the animal sprites, so let me find the mouse again. So to add the mouse to your project, just click on it once, and it will go into your project there. And then come back and mark step number two as done. Get your reward and your points, and then uh, we'll move on to step number three. So I'll give you some time to step number two, and I'll keep an eye out for how everyone is doing. So basically, in this project, we're going to be controlling the mix and different cats are going to appear on the screen and start chasing us and we're going to have to dodge them. That's essentially the, the gist of the game. But as usual, we'll, at the end, once you've completed the game, you can kind of put your own, your own twist on it. Uh, I'm just going to turn down the lights because it's a bit bright in here. That's better. Okay, I can see six coders have completed step number two. So I'll just give it a little bit more time. Keep an eye on the chat here to see if anyone. Hello, oh, Liz. Metal sound the voice changers make me lose my mind. Is my voice changer out? So, okay, back <laughs> to my normal voice. So again, apologies. So that's two uh, mistakes I'm after making. One, my mic wasn't properly connected. And then two, when I connected it, I didn't realize that my voice changer was on. So now we're back to my normal voice. So for anyone who's new to the live lessons, we normally, I normally put on my voice changer just for a small part of it, just for a bit of fun. Uh, so it's not meant to be on that long. Um, it's one of those days. Okay, let me see. Is there any other chats there? No. Okay, so <laughs> let's move on to step number three. So step number three, we're going to make the mouse move. So if you see here in the little animation, what we're going to do is make the mouse move wherever we put our mouse. So our mouse is the little arrow that we move around, either with your trackpad or if you're using a mouse like me. So what we're going to do is just make the cat go to wherever we put our mouse uh, pointer. And to do that, let me zoom in here, we're going to add in this code. So this is going to be added into the mouse. So when green flag clicked, we're going to make it show because we might make we might make it hide later on so that's why it's important to put in the show now and then we're going to use a forever block so a forever block is a loop block whatever we put in there will just keep on happening forever and ever and ever and ever and we're going to say go to mouse pointer so that sprite will go to the mouse pointer okay let's add in this code i'm going to switch across to scratch i'm going to go into the events toolbox and bring in a when green flag clicked zoom in a little bit then I'm going to go into the looks toolbox and get a show block and join that on. So if you're new to Scratch, this is the toolbox. This is where all our blocks and instructions are. And we just drag and drop them from the toolbox into this center area here. This is our code area. And then we click on the green flag to run our code. So when green flag clicked show, and we said we're going to go into, we're going to get a forever block. So that's in the control toolbox, the orange control toolbox get a forever block and join it on 
and then it's an emotion toolbox. We're going to get a go to block. So it says go to random position at the moment, but we're going to change that by clicking on the little white arrow to mouse pointer. So when we run our code, wherever I put the mouse, my mouse pointer at the mouse sprite follows because that's what the code tells it what to do. Okay, so if you want to go ahead and do that, I'm going to go and mark my step as done. Step number three. I can see people flying along uh, up to step number nine and ten already. Code Knight says can't see your video. You should be able to. Yeah, you should be able to just uh, click on the play here and you should be able to see the video broadcasting. Uh, if all else fails, just give the page a refresh and then try it again. Um, I can see that it is broadcasting out here. So uh, yeah, so just do that and you should be able to get, get the video. Okay, so six coders have completed step number three. Let me just give a bit more time. Again, if I am going too fast, please do let me know. Just put a red thumbs down into the into the chat by clicking on React and then click on red thumbs down. I'll know that there is a problem. Or you can put it, you can type into the chat by using the blue chat button and then uh, clicking on send. Okay, metal is good. Okay, the next step that we're going to do is we're just going to animate the mouse a little bit. So I'll move on to step number four. So we can see here when the mouse uh, is moving around, it's just its legs are just kind of animating. So if you've done any of our animating lessons before, uh, you'll know how to do this. We're just going to use the costumes, but I'll explain how we're going to do it now. So. What I'm going to do, so we're going to add in some uh, extra code. So what we're going to say is, let me zoom in. We're going to say when green flag clicked forever, we're going to say next costume. And that is going to flick between the different costumes that the mouse has. And I'll show you them in a second. But we're going to just wait 0.1 of a second in between. So it doesn't go super fast, but just enough to make it kind of look like the legs are going at the right speed. OK, so I'll show you how to do this if I go into Scratch here. So you can, uh, oh, let me show you the costume. So I'm going to click on the Costumes tab up here. And you'll see that there's two different costumes. This is what a costume is. It's just a kind of different look for that sprite. This one has two costumes. And by flicking between them, we can make, make it look like it's kind of running with its, its feet or its legs moving back and forth. So what we're going to do is we can add in some more code. So we could put it inside this forever, or we can just add in a new one. So I'm going to just add in a new one. So when green flag clicked, let me check the code into the control toolbox, get a forever, into the looks toolbox and get a next costume. And that goes inside the forever. That'll make a flick in between. So if I do it there, uh, run my code, you see it goes a little bit too fast. So what we want to do is slow it down. So we're going to go into the control toolbox, get a wait one second, and that goes inside the forever as well. But we're going to change it to be 0 0.1. So that's one tenth of a second. So it'll just slow it down a little bit. You'll see it here. Just about the right speed that we want. Okay. So I'm going to mark step number four as done. Oh, I got a face confused emoji. If you ever want to see what people, what the awards people are getting, you can actually always click on them here. Uh, so Zara got a Starfighter, Code Knight got some water, Liam Cody got a, a, a drone or a quadcopter, as I used to call them, uh, or as a lot of people used to call them. Liam Cody got an acorn. Uh, and here's some Christmas ones from the Christmas series. Code Knight got a sleigh, Liam got a tree, Metal got a flower, Code Knight got a legendary one, a brain. Very good. Uh, oh, look at this one. Mug Marshmallows. That's Square Sam. 
there you go so excellent some lots of cool uh, awards being won there oh look at that hockey puck and a planet rings that's a pretty cool one i like that one okay so how are we doing again i can see six coders have oh no it's just updated four co coders have completed step number four animating the mouse so i'm going to give a little bit more time for people to do that i can see some people have completed the project if you do complete the project what i'd love you to do is put in your own idea into the project so have a little bit of a think about you know how you would like to change it what you'd like to add in or make it better uh, and go ahead and do that try and add in the codes to put in your idea into your project and then do share your project so to share your project let me go right down the end there's a share your project button here so if you click on that it'll open up the page uh, to share your project show you the instructions how you'll need to be logged into scratch to do this but basically you need to get the url the link and you will paste it into here and then you can also put in the name of your project and uh, give it a little bit of a description and just click on share on project then it'll pop up in the chat here and we can actually all have a look at your project okay so let me go back up and down to step number four i'll give it a bit more time for people to do this and before we move on to step number five creating the cat okay so let's move on to step number five so step number five we're just going to add in the cat sprite from the sprite library so easy enough so i'll show you how to do this if you don't already know which i assume you do so i'm going to go across to my scratch tab again i'm going to go down to the bottom here and open up the sprite library and this time i'm going to look for the cat oh there it is there cat two the sprite we want is this one here, cat2. So click on it once and it goes into my project here. So now I've got two sprites. You'll, you, when you do add it, you might uh, notice that your code is after going. So where's my code gone? I had all loads of code here. Well, your code is stored with whatever sprite you added it to. So we added the code to mouse. So if I click on mouse here, you'll see the code for mouse. I click back on cat we'll see that we haven't added in any codes to cat just yet so let me mark step number five as done and i'll see how everyone's doing i see three coder coders have recently completed that but some are actually ahead i can see rory has completed it code knight is ahead liam has completed it uh, Square Sam has completed it. Zara has completed it. Okay, it looks like most people have. So I'm going to keep on moving then. So we'll move on to step number six. And here's where it starts getting, getting a little bit interesting. So what we're going to do is create clones or copies of the cat. So to do that, we're going to add in this code. Uh, and we're going to add this to the cat sprite. So what we're going to say is we're going to set the cat to be about 50% of its size. And then we're going to hide it. And then what we're going to do is in a forever block, we're going to wait a random number of seconds between one and three seconds, and we're going to create a clone of it. Okay. And then in the next step is where we'll actually start programming it to move around the copies to the clones to move around. Okay. So. Sorry, the, uh, the stream went there down there momentarily having lots of problems today anything that can go wrong will go wrong okay so let us add in this code to create the clones of the cache to create the copies of the cache so i'm going to switch across to scratch and make sure my cache 2 sprite is selected and then i'm going to go into the 
yellow events toolbox and bring in a when green flag clicked. Let me check my code. So set size to 50% and then hide. And both of these are in the purple looks toolbox. So I'm going to go into purple looks and get set size to 100%. And I'm going to change that to 50. And then I'm going to get a hide block because we don't want to show, we only want to show the cache when it gets created as a copy and that's in step number seven. So for now we're going to hide it and then we're going to go into the orange control toolbox and get a forever block and add that on and then we're going to wait a random number of seconds. So this is, a, it's always good to add some randomness into a game. Uh, those who have uh, done a lot of our live lessons when we're creating games, I always bang on, always go on about randomness in games. It's really crucial because you don't want a game to be predictable. The more unpredictable it is, the kind of more challenging it is and the more enjoyable it is. So let's get a wait one second and that goes inside the forever block here. But then we're going to go into the operators, the green operators toolbox, and we're going to get a pick random one to ten. I'm going to drag that in and we're going to put it inside instead of the one. You see there when I put it close to it, it gets a little halo. It means I can drop it in and you can put in whatever you want between one and three seconds or maybe even one and five seconds, whatever you want to do or two and five seconds. You can kind of play around with the times that you want for the randomness for how often uh, the cats should be created. And then finally back into the control toolbox and get create clone of myself and that goes inside the forever so every one or three uh, one or three seconds or one two or three seconds it's going to create a clone of itself now when i click on the green flag here nothing's going to happen apart from the cache is hidden but really what's happening in the background while well, what what you can't actually see because they're being they're hidden is copies or clones of the cache every one two or three seconds are being created. So in step number seven, we're actually going to start showing them. So that's when we'll start seeing them actually on the, in the stage area here. Okay, I'm going to mark step number six as done and see how everyone is doing. See if I missed any messages. Liam is trucking along. Liam has completed it. Well done, Liam. Again, if you have completed the project, I do encourage you to put in your own idea into it. Uh, come up with your own idea and see if you can put it into it and then share your project and then I'll pull it up on the screen here so everybody can see. Code Night is on step six uh, or on step seven. Ruri is on step 11. Metal is step set or step nine. Code Night is, oh, Code Night's flying along. Okay, Zara's flying along. Ruri has completed the project. Okay, I think, I don't think anybody's waiting for me. So I'm going to move on then to step number seven. And here's where we're going to make the cat jump or kind of move towards our mouse. So let's have a look what that looks like. So the cat is going to start moving. See when they appear every few seconds, they're going to start moving towards our mouse and we're going to need to dodge the cats. So to do that, this is the code we're going to add. Um, so when the cat, this is code we're adding to the cat. When I start as a clone, so when a copy or a clone of the cat is created, we're going to make it go to just a random position on the screen. Again, randomness in games, good thing. We're going to make the cat show, so that copy of it show. Wait one second, so just give your, you a little bit of time to react as the mouse. And then we're going to use a forever block to glide the mouse or sorry, glide the cat towards the mouse. And again, we'll add in a little bit more randomness. So how fast the, the cat moves towards the mouse is between 0.5 and two seconds. Again, you can play around with those, see what works for you. And we'll also play a sound. So that uh, we're gonna start to sound high whoosh. Okay, let's add in this code. So I'm gonna switch to scratch and I'm gonna click on the red button here. So my cat is moving around. And I'm going to go into the orange control toolbox and get when I start as a clone and just put it in on its own there like that. Let me check the code again. Oh, yeah. Go to random position. So into motion and get go to random position. And that goes on there. And then we're going to get a show block. 
and put that underneath. So let's actually just see this working by clicking on the green flag. So every few seconds there's a cat, there's another cat, and we can see them being created there. Okay, so my code is working. I'm actually going to make my mouse a little bit smaller. It's a little bit too big for my liking, so I'm going to maybe change it to 70% of its size, maybe even smaller, 50. If you want to do that, you can do that. You can either change it here, or if you want, you can actually add in some code. You could say set size to 50%. Just might, might make it look a little bit better in terms of the size of the mouse and the cat, because mice are smaller than cats. Okay, so uh, back to my code. So for my cat, I'm gonna wait one second and then do the forever glide. So back into my cat, get a forever block in the orange control toolbox forever block then get a glide block that is in the motion toolbox so you can see there's one there it says glide one seconds to random position but we're going to change that by clicking on the white arrow and change it to be mouse one and again we're going to get a pick random block so we're going to go into the operators toolbox and get a pick random one to ten and that goes in there and we're going to say between 0.5 and two seconds let's move across so we can see it all and then we're also going to play the sound so what sound do we say start sound hi whoosh so i'm going to go in and get start sound and put that inside the forever block like so hi whoosh isn't there so i need to add that in from the library so to do that you click on the sounds tab here so if we want to add in a, a sound from the sound library you click on the sounds tab and then then the bottom left Click on the magnifying glass to open it up. And what was it? High whoosh. So I'm going to high. And there it is there. So you can find it uh, by typing in high and then clicking on high whoosh. And that will add it to your project. So when you go back to your code, and now when I click on the little white down arrow, we can see high whoosh is there. Okay. So let me see if this works. Click on the green flag. There's my cats getting created and moving towards me. Okay, so I can see that's working. I'm gonna mark that step as done. Step number seven. Ooh, steam, nice. Okay, so I see a good few people have completed the project. Again, I'll say it again, I do urge you, put your own idea into it and then share the project with us and then we'll, uh, I'll open it up and we can have a look at what, everyone, at what everyone's idea is and how they, uh, how they decided to do it. So that's what that's a kind of extra challenge that I would challenge uh, anyone that has finished the project already to do. Put in your own idea. Uh, come up with a, just something extra into the game, some some form of change or you know something that makes it better that you think makes it better. Put the code in or whatever you might need to do, and then share it, and then we'll open it up. Okay. So I'll give a little bit more time now before we move on to step number eight. So I'll just give a little bit more time because there was uh, a fair few blocks in that step number seven. I see Metal has a comment there. I can't cause my mom gets mad at me when I don't do the exact thing I was told. Well, I do also want you to do the exact thing in terms of all the different steps. But once you have completed the project, once you've done all your work, now it's time for you to explore. So that's when you're able to go off with your, uh, you know, come up with your own idea and try and put it in. So uh, do, do do that, Metal, if you get a chance. You know, come up with your own idea. Um, and then put it into it once you're finished the project. Okay, so let's move on then to step number eight. So in step number eight, we're just going to create two variables, one called life and one called time. And every, anytime we're really creating a game, we do use variables, you know, for if we're creating life, lives, or a score, but, uh, but we're going to create a life one and a time one. So the life variable um, will make it so the game doesn't end when the cat uh, uh, catches the mouse. 
um, and we'll also increase our life variable when we collect cheese puffs which we're going to create later on the time variable will be our uh, timer on the game um, so we want to see how long we can last while avoiding the cats and getting those cheese puffs okay so as usual you can click on the little tip box to see there how to uh, create a variable to, to see how to do this but I'm also going to show you now so I'm going to go into my scratch tab and I'm going to go into the variables toolbox and then I'm going to click on make a variable and I'm going to type in life l-i-f-e and click on ok you can leave it as for all spites and then click on ok and then again click on make a variable and type in time and click on ok so I've created life and time and you'll see them over here in the stage area. So if you want to show them, um, you can leave them kind of checked on here or you can hide them by toggling these checkboxes. But we do want to show them. So I'm just going to arrange them up here, life and time, just like so. And then I'm going to mark step number eight as done. Okay, brilliant. I see Zara has shared uh, their project so I will open that up now in a minute and um, I will just give a little bit of time for people to do step number eight actually while while I give them time for step number eight I will open up Zara's project so let's see what Zara has done so cat and mouse and we're gonna let's play it first of all and then we'll see inside so there's the cat. Oh, you edited the cat. Look, it's a kind of tabby cat. I like it. Whoop. This is a cool game. So I have seven lives. Oh, my cheese puffs. That's brilliant, Sarah. So let me go inside and see. So I can see you have edited the cat costume. That's really cool. Well done. Okay, so let's should that should be enough time for people to create those variables if you're coming along with me. So let me move on to step number nine. So for step number nine, we're just going to set up the variables. So what we're going to do is let's zoom in here. We're going to set time to zero and life to five. And we can also say show them. You don't have to use those blocks if you don't want to. Um, you can just use the checkboxes like I showed you. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start the timer adding you know counting up so in a forever block we're going to say change time by one and then we're going to wait one second so it's going to just keep on adding up and then what we're going to say is um, if your life gets down to uh, less than one so if you get back down to zero lives we're going to say uh, we're going to hide so we're going to add this into the mouse sprite so we're going to hide the mouse and then just use this stop all block which will stop all the code from running so it's game over okay so let's add in this code so i'm going to switch across to scratch go back to code oh i'm going to close down zara's project and go to my project so this is code i'm going to add into the mouse so i'm going to get another when green flag clicked and then i'm going to the variables and i'm going to get set life to zero and i'm going to get that twice like so, but I'm going to change one of them to be time. So set time to zero and set life to, not to be say five. Yeah, set life to five. Um, I'm not going to use, you don't actually have to do the show variable because we, you know, we're showing them using the checkboxes here. So we don't need to add in that code. And then we're just going to add, uh, count the time up. So we're going to get, go into the orange control toolbox, get a forever. Um, and then into, oh, still in the orange control, we'll get a wait one seconds. And then into variables and we'll say change life by one let me zoom in here but instead of changing life by one we'll change time by one so let me zoom in to my stage area so when i click on the green flag the time as we see up the top there is counting up and life is set to five okay so i'm going to mark step number nine as done nearly there So we've step number 10 and then 11 to do, and then we're done. If there's anyone else that's finished their project, again, put in your own idea and do make sure you share the project so we can see um, your great ideas. 
So I'll give a little bit more time for people to do step number nine, and then I'll move on to step number 10. Okay, so let's move on to step number 10. So here's where we're gonna add in the Cheesy Puffs Sprite. So again, we're just gonna open up the Sprite Library and then add it in. So let's go ahead and do that. So Sprite Library, let's get rid of my head. And we're gonna find the Cheesy Puffs. So I'm just gonna type in C-H-E for cheese. And then we can see them here, Cheesy Puffs. So click on them once and then that Sprite gets added in. So let me go back to my instructions and mark step number 10 as done. I'll get another emoji award. Okay, so now we'll move on to step number 11. So this is where we collect them. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, basically at the start of the game, the cheesy puffs are going to go to a random position. Okay, um, and we're going to do a couple of things like make it show, change its size and do it popping sound so let's add that in first of all so my cheesy puff sprite is selected in the sprite list i'm going to go into events and bring in a when green flag clicked and then go into motion and get a go to random position again more randomness for our game then we're going to say show and set size to 50 percent so show and set size to 100%, but change it to 50. Do you know what? I'm actually gonna put that, this block here, up at the top. I want that to happen first before I show it, before I show the cheesy puff. So there we can see it working. So each time I click on the green flag, it's going to a random position. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in a forever block. And what we're gonna do is keep on checking if it's touching the mouse sprite, not your mouse pointer, the mouse sprite. If it is, so if the mouse collects it, runs into it, we're gonna play another popping sound. Oh, did I do the popping sound? No, I didn't. So let me go to sound and I'm gonna get start sound pop. Like so. So we're, so we're gonna say forever, if touching mouse, start sound pop. Then we're gonna change life uh, by pick random one to two. Do you know what? I, uh, yeah, you can do that random one to two or you can just uh, do uh, one if you want. Then we're going to hide it. We're going to wait uh, another five, between five and eight seconds. Go to another random position and show it. Okay, so that, that way it stays on the screen for a certain amount of seconds to give you a chance to get it and then go somewhere else on the screen so it doesn't stay there. So let's add this in. We're going to go into control and get a forever block. And then we're going to say get an if then block. So again, in the control toolbox, if then, here, let me stop this it's making a lot of noise, into the sensing toolbox and get the touching mouse pointer. And that goes in between if and then like so. But we're going to change it to be mouse one. So the mouse one sprite. So we're going to say start sound pop and then change life. So Let's go into sound and get start sound pop in there. And then we're going to change life by one. So into variables and get change life by one. And that goes in. So again, you can put in a random one here if you want a random block. So you get between either one or two points. So just a little bit more randomness. So some cheesy puffs are worth more than others. And then what we're going to do is hide it, wait a few seconds, and then make it go to a random position and show it. So let's get a hide block and then the wait block. So that's in control. Wait one second. But oh, let's duplicate this block here rather than get one from the, from the toolbox. So I can right click on any block and say duplicate. And that creates a copy of it. 
So I'll put that there. So between five and eight seconds. Go to a random position. I took that from the blue motion toolbox. Go to random position and then show. So into looks again and get a show block and put it in at the bottom there. So now when I run my code, I'll just wait a few seconds. It should hide after a few seconds that cheesy puff there, all the cheesy puffs. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, it's only if I'm touching it. So when I get it, sorry, then it, it should hide for a few seconds. So one, two, three, four, five. It should appear somewhere. There it is again. And if I get it, then another, you know, five and eight seconds and it should appear. OK, I'm happy enough with that. So I'm going to go back and uh, just check that all my code is correct. That is for the cheesy puffs. So I'm going to mark that as done. Oh. Oh, that's collecting the cheesy puffs. Uh, yeah, that's done. I do think I missed something though. Did I miss the cat is meant to only live for a certain amount of seconds? So I didn't actually miss it, but what I think we should do because when the cat, oh, there is, where is the code for the cat? Play clones. So, oh, we've, we ha we need to put in some code for the cat. Yeah, I, so we, we've missed some code from these instructions. I, I will fix these instructions. So let me explain. So there's no consequence if the cat goes into you. So what we need to do is add in some codes that if the cat goes into you, then you lose a life. So let's go into the cat um, sprite here, and I'll show you what to do. So we're gonna get another when green flag clicked, into control, get a forever block, so another forever, and then get another if then, so that goes inside like that. So when green flag clicked, forever if then, let me just stop this. And what we're going to say is, because this is code for the cat, so we're going to say if the cat is touching the mouse, so we're going to get the touching mouse pointer and put it in between if and then, click on the white arrow and change it to be mouse one. So if the cat, so this is code we're adding to the cat, is touching the mouse, then what we want to do is we want to lose a life and then uh, get rid of that cat. You know, we won't leave them all on the screen. So let's uh, lose a life. So go into variables and change life by one goes inside the if then we're going to change it to be minus one so you will lose one life and then into control and there's delete this clone so that will delete the clone of the of the cat so let's try this now so click on green flag so i'm five lives let's test it so hmm, why is that not oh yeah I didn't add that in the right place. That needs to go when I start as a clone. So I'm going to actually take this if then. I don't need this. I'm going to get rid of that. So this if then, if touching mouse one, then change life by minus one and delete this cone. This needs to go inside the forever block. The forever block underneath when I start as clone. So now let's test it out. Yeah, there we go, down to four lives, three. Hmm, the glide is, is screwing it up a little bit, so I'm going to put this at the top, like so. And let's see if it works. So on five lives, yeah, that's faster. Okay, and the life minus four should be kicking in. So where is that? Oh, maybe I didn't add that in. Let me check. Oh, I didn't add this in. 
So this was to be added in for handling the time variables. So sorry, I left this part out. So I never showed you. So when green flag clicked and again, forever. And again, if then. Oh. And what we're going to say is if life is less than one. So basically, if you have no lives left. So to do that, we need to get go into the comparison toolbox to get this less than block, which I'll show you now. So into comparison, and there's the less than is this one here. And that goes in between if and then. And we're going to go into variables and we can get the life block like so. And that goes in the first part and then change 50 to be one. Second part. And what did we say? We're going to hide the mouse. So hide and then into control and get a stop all. And that goes there. So that is for the end of the game. So let's see if this works. So I start off with five lives. Let's go. So four. Three, may as well get my cheesy puffs. Oh, they add on to my life. I won't do that again. <laughs> so two, one, zero. And cat disappears, and that's the end of the game. Okay, so sorry, I left that part out. So there is one thing in the instructions that I need to add in. And that is, where is it? For the cat. What we're going to say is if it's touching the mouse then you lose a life so i will add that into the instructions and um, so that is the live lesson have i done everything i have so let me see if anyone has submitted no only zara has submitted but if anyone else does want to submit their project please do please do submit it uh, and we'll always take a look at it we keep, uh, sometimes we start uh, the classes a little bit early and um, so we might start at like 4 15 and we just have a little bit of chat so if anyone does submit their project i'll um we'll, we'll have a look at it next week where we'll be doing another live lesson so that's it for today i hope you all enjoyed it uh, and we will see you next wednesday about half four bye